All right, so here we are for the red armor. I think a lot of people uh, actually don't like to paint red armor because uh, it's quite challenging to get a red that turns out not too orange and uh, not too pink. Mm -hmm. Because uh, no matter how you highlight a red, it always obscures the tone quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, we try to work around that. Uh, to be honest, I haven't done a red armor in years, uh, but um, I think we will just have a look and s see how how I would try, <laughs> try to solve the problem on camera. Um, red can also be one of those funny colors as well when it comes to painting it that, that it can be quite tricky to cover. Yeah, over like a dark color. Mm -hmm. True. Um, the actually the I like quite like the new red tones from the new Games Workshop red. Uh, range uh -huh. the uh, the Mephiston red is quite a nice tone that covers quite well directly on black. Is the is that the the base one the Mephiston red? Um, yeah, it's a base color. Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard good things. Um, so one trick when painting red is that you actually don't highlight it in in the first place. You just start with a very intense bright red and tone that down. So your medium color is a toned down version, and you highlight it with the original red. Ah, okay, yeah. Like because like you like you were saying with the the bone to start with the light color and then work downwards. Yeah, yeah. But here in this case, the the red is the our highlight color is just the original red. Okay. Uh, because uh, it would look weird to highlight it otherwise. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing that can be quite a nice uh, effect is when you paint. Uh, on the dark surface, paint highlights with white first, and then glaze over it with the red because ah, okay. they will shine through. Ah, okay, interesting. Um, so yeah, I think we will just try that here on the this piece of the uh, uh, foot armor. And then if it goes horribly wrong, we can you yeah, can yeah, we, we can we can <laughs> stop the filming. And that's go, good to go actually, home. That's <laughs> good to say. That if it goes horribly wrong, you probably won't see this in this whole conversation. <laughs> we'll just never okay. yeah. Check who. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, just have some white on the color uh, on the. Uh, so I just have some white on the tip of the brush. I will just. Okay, I'm just putting some. Sometimes, feathering out white is a bit painful. Uh, just with water, so. Just add a little bit of black. So doing something like this, I think it's 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 called sketching lights. Is that is that right? Yeah. Or if it's not, that's that's what we're gonna call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, you got the spirit. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I guess uh, that stage does not need to be hundred percent perfect. We just want to place our like the, the basic light. Mm -hmm. Use some black to get that separation back. <laughs> Sorry, just just using black and white, you've already got something that looks good. <laughs>
never would have thought of painting red armor this way. I think I instantly would have um, I would have base coated a red, um, maybe dark lined, um, and then highlighted with like a, like a yellowy color. Yeah. Um, but like a, like a yellowy brown, not not like a, a really bright yellow, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it sometimes it works good with like uh, like a apricot tone. Mm -hmm. So it could work to to some extent. Um, I think so far so good uh, for the sketched life. Let me just hear some small dots. As I said, it's also for me <laughs> kind of kind of an experiment. Um, now I'm making some of the um, Mephiston red with some of the black. Just just a little tip of, of black. Yeah. Because because I, I I personally I find sometimes if you if you add too much black to red it can get a bit muddy. It's a bit just just doesn't look very nice. Yeah, I'm also just trying to have like a gradient of red on my palette. Yeah. Would you ever darken the red with with like a green? You know, using like color theory or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely you could you could do that, but I think that it's actually nicer if you add a green or or blue for for instance uh, with a glaze later on and not mix it directly in the color. Okay. The the impact is much nicer because you preserve the red and the highlights and ah, okay. don't distort the color too much. All right, so um, let's start with a thin glaze of the, the red. And this this is another stage where it comes back to what you said earlier on to to be patient with it. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, one second, the other side. Okay, make sure that layer is dry before you continue with the next one. Mm -hmm. Something that, that might would you agree it's useful to mention that that if um, if if you're looking to better yourself painting, it's important that to to sometimes take a minute and just stop and look at everyday objects, yeah, and to see how the light affects it when it hits them. Because um, often, I mean, even like looking at the screens you have here in the studio, there are those little points of light, yeah, that the light is hitting it, and, and that's very natural because that, that you know that's what it looks like in real life. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, I uh, just I noticed that I start, you know, staring at things all the time, like oh, look yep. at the light, look, look at how how beautifully it reflects in the DC the speculus. <laughs> My girlfriend always thinks I'm crazy, but <laughs> 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 I think that is one fascinating thing about miniature painting is that once you start thinking about uh, light and shadow, you cannot stop it. Stop yep. it actually. You see Definitely. it everywhere. And it's it's really nice because you can learn everywhere. And if you if you you know these days, every, most people most people have a phone with a camera on it. If you see something that you think, oh wow, that looks cool, just take a quick picture and keep yeah. it for reference later on. See, this is how skilled Ben Comet is. He, he's painting and he has what, what would drive me insane is one of those little bits of hair on the brush that's just sticking out on the side. Yeah, I just saw I would not be able to I would not be able to concentrate properly and, and do the stroke on, on a miniature if I had that felt there. It would, it would just nope, you've got to stop, wash it, get it, um, get it back to a point again. Make sure you the the uh, glaze you apply does not run out of the brush. So you need to control it before it sets. Mm -hmm. I 
Would you say that's tougher to do with, with like, uh, if you had a synthetic brush to do a glaze? Because something I found that with a synthetic brush is it didn't seem to hold the liquid as, as well when, when doing a glaze. Yeah. Like you had a little, le- I find I had a little less control than, than with, say, a natural hairbrush. I think I didn't use a synthetic brush for years. Um, so I actually don't don't really know how to oh, okay. <laughs> answer that. Because, uh, I wouldn't know. I've, I've never gone down to that level. <laughs> <laughs> now I've started with synthetic brushes, but uh, I think once once I really got into painting and I discovered um, Winsor Newton and the um, the uh, Da Vinci series, mm-hmm. I never went back to synthetic. I, I, I would mention though that, that um, you, you don't necessarily have to get something like a Winsor Newton Series 7 or, or a Da Vinci. They, they are fantastic brushes um, and definitely worth every penny because they're, they're, you, if you look after them, they'll last a while and, and they're great tools. But you, there are some companies out there which do some very affordable natural hair brushes which you can pick up for, for essentially the same price as a synthetic. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just discovered, because I don't treat my brushes very well, actually. Um, I treat them quite rough. So, um, these Ride brushes... Ride them hard and hang them up wet. <laughs> uh, and these brushes really last quite a bit, even if, if you don't treat them like a princess. Mm-hmm. And that is actually the, the uh, main point why I decided to, to stay with those. Um, I, li- I like that saying, treat them like a princess. <laughs> That's nice. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> oh, but it's it's really true. Um, uh, I've been using cheaper brushes, and I used to use one brush per miniature. Oh, after okay. That yeah. it was gone, and then like after half a year, you pay at least as much as, as, right. as much as you would have just if you would have just taken a good one or an expensive good one. Okay, just adding a bit of scratches here uh, to the tip and also here to the side mm-hmm. to make it even look a bit more sparkly. And when you when you place the, the scratches, you've done the dark line and you've pre- placed the white underneath it. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't do it over the top? No. No. Um, never because um, actually the um, it's a bit like <laughs> if you take this foam for example and that would be the cut. Mm-hmm. The light would just be caught on that edge because it's standing up towards mm-hmm. the light and not on that. So uh, always on the on the lower side. Mm-hmm. Okay, and a bit of the uh, pure red, come down quite a bit. You see here on the on the black, you can hardly see see very it. thin. Do you find with your glazes that you need to break surface tension at all? Mm. I, I, I see some people using uh, things like glaze medium. Yeah, the, the thing is because I'm doing brush lacking, I really try to avoid <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. any anything but okay. water and paint. Uh, it, but Ben's obviously a purist. He likes his paint to be to be uh, na- natural, nothing, nothing <laughs> no, no additives. Yeah. <laughs> it was something that was very confusing to me coming into painting when I was I was reading up. You, see all these different things that you can get you can get like glaze medium paint retarder uh exactly matte medium gloss yeah, yeah. medium satin medium um yeah they're, they're and, and they're all supposedly different with different properties and different uses yeah, and, and if you mix them with different colors more. it will change that and um, so so yeah i know there's a lot of different magic mediums going on mm-hmm. but i really like to keep it as simple as possible mm-hmm. it makes things a lot easier also when you travel and you want to paint there and you know, you don't want to bring all your magic right. potions with you. Right. So, so it's very good to be easily adjusted to other uh, painting places. Mm-hmm. 
And this is a, a full-time Slayer Sword winner, so it's not saying it's wrong, but just <laughs> it's possible to achieve something that's fantastic just using water and paint. Yeah, sometimes um, for some techniques, something like a retarder is nice as well. Uh, like Fernando uses the retarder. It's oh, yeah. quite mind-blowing, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, but That's a really interesting video, the, yep. the Fernando's one. I really like the way that he was doing the washes. They were, they were very good. So here on the on the knee pad, uh, I think for now I would leave that and maybe see if I need some stronger dark lining afterwards and more stronger shadows. But for me, this uh, looks good um, at the moment. I will have to check it back once uh, I've done a larger part. Uh huh. Part of the armor, we try to um, try to highlight it with a round highlight because this part here is nicely rounded. So just sketch in the, a very <laughs> oh, sorry sketch in that <laughs> yeah <laughs> spitting no um so I will just sketch in a very bright round light. Mm -hmm. And um, this this comes back to what you said in the first chapter that that try and place your highlight the, the similar shape of the surface that you're that you're painting yeah and then with a medium tone just blend over the border the two have you ever painted a miniature like a whole miniature in this way where you've just Done, done the, the black and white effect and then just glazed over colors. No, but there are some painters that actually work like that. Mm -hmm. um, I heard that Anna from Poland, Anna Machowska, uh -huh. she, she paints like that or used to paint a while like that. Mm, and I think the, it's quite interesting. Um, but it's more, if you try that, it's, it's I think it's a bit like... Um, trying to paint a miniature, like totally monochrome. It's a nice little game, but somehow I just prefer the techniques I'm so used to. Uh -huh. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of laziness. It's, I could try <laughs> it, but... You know, so that I do like, I've seen some, a couple of well-painted monochrome figures and they're gorgeous. Yeah, they're so I, I did that uh, um, with uh, some models as well, just to, Practice the um, actually practice the amount of contrast you need to do display a certain material because mm -hmm. if you just have one one color and black and white, you are forced to show everything just by by, um, by the way you used contrast, mm -hmm. and that's a very nice thing you can practice with a monochrome miniature. So yeah, the round highlight not super soft, but uh, as we saw on the foot, it's. And that looks nice and soft and blended to me, but um, I'm sure to your eyes it's not. Yeah, you see all these little, <laughs> all these little mistakes. No, but if it would be like a black armor or a, a non-metal armor, that definitely would need some more polishing with glazes. Um, but as we will tint it now, I think we should be good. Would you say it's um as a rule it's to, to keep your, your paint maybe a touch thinner than you might think when it comes to a glaze because it's it's easier for you to add to it yeah. than because you can't take away. Definitely. And uh, be sure that the amount of paint you have in the brush is enough for the surface you want to cover. Not for just for the surface. Yeah, because if you stop uh, and have to reload the brush, the glaze might dry and leave a nasty stain. Right. So one thing you have to note when you use a blow dryer is that the surface is warmer after you, uh, after you've used the blow dryer, so you need right. to wait another second before. Right. Otherwise, the paint will just instantly dry, and you'll have a really nasty spot. And some some miniatures take longer to cool down than others. Like yeah. if you have a metal miniature, that that thing's going to heat up very very quickly, <laughs> and will stay warm for a while. I 
it's incredible how you're able to get such such contrast and really you're just I mean what you're using black white and some red yeah that's it <laughs> yeah I think it's you know a lot of people do crazy mixtures to to achieve a good look and I think it's not always necessary you can just do with three or four colors on the palette you can paint mm -hmm. a beautiful miniature uh, without going crazy with the mixes especially when you modulate the color with with glazes afterwards it's just very easy to get a very rich look I'm just doing some lining here And again, some uh, scratches, pure black. Because even if uh, even if he has just cr crawled out of the, the chaotic swamp, he, he most likely would have cut him, scratched himself on a couple of pebbles along the way. Yeah, especially areas like the knee pad. And you want something to go on there. I think I think that that's a, something that's worth mentioning as well when it comes to things like scratches and weathering. To always try and constant try and think about where um, where there would be the most wear and tear, um, where there would be where there would be scratches, not to put them just like randomly all over the model. Yeah, definitely, and also uh, make them in a, in a, in a just create them in a place where they would appear, but. Uh, while painting scratches, do them pretty random. You don't want it to look like a pattern or a camouflage or right. something. <clears throat> so again, these now look a bit too strong, so we glaze over it with the pure red. It's nice to to have like different different uh, points of light also on s like small scratches like that. So I'm having one line and then I'm just little, little dots of white like uh, you you um, like you did for the basing video. Yeah. When you were drawing the the lines of the the cracks on the on the base, you, mm -hmm. you were doing the same thing, just little dots because yeah. it looks weird to have. And and straight, yeah, just, like just a, a, a hardcore straight, white line. Straight, straight line. Yeah, it's always good to break up the lines because it makes them look more, way more natural. Mm -hmm. It's ready to put that in somebody's face. <laughs> okay, so um, just a bit more red on the on the upper part to make it. Bit more vibrant. If you wanted to sound uh, professional, you could say uh, saturated, maybe, <laughs> so that you could sound. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> if, you want, if you wanted some lingo, I'm just giving some lingo there for people. Maybe if you, if you wanted to sound professional to your friends. <laughs> so yeah, saturated these. So just placed a bit of white up here and then now covering it again with a glass of red to bring it up. But I, I know we've been joking about pink, but 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 on but seriously, if you, if you add sometimes you have to be careful with white with pink. Would would you agree? Uh, yeah. Uh, white with, with red because it comes. It yeah, comes yeah, out pink definitely. That's why I always glaze over it with the pure red again to to get rid of that pinkish look. Mm -hmm. Also down here, it's still a bit pink, but. Uh, I think it works very good. The eye is red. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the the shoulder pad. I know it's curved, but it's slightly like this. Yeah. You know, so so the, the and the foot's like this. So well, you can't actually see what I'm doing on camera. So I'm probably like a crazy man. But um, <laughs> the, the shoulder pad's facing downwards, and, and the foot is is like you know it, it, it catches the full beam of the yeah. Head. Yeah, and definitely. So especially when you put it like that, mm -hmm. this here should be a lot brighter. But here the round highlight is still shining through, so 
It is. And if it was metal that's tinted red, that is how it would uh, would look. Yep. Un under bright light. So we continue with the upper part of the leg. And we want a quite a strong contrast here on the like on the middle line. Mm -hmm. You you can almost see it in, in on the miniature the way that the light actually yeah. plays. You can see that line that comes straight down and it, it so maybe it helps to, to look at that and have a rough idea in your head. You can see how that light plays on yeah. it first. Yeah, right. See that so too. you have an idea of where to put the strokes. So there's black now. It's more of a wet on wet technique. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't have a perfect angle for the to pull my brush. Um, I just decided to do it in a wet and wet with the base color already on the surface. Thanks. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Okay, for the upper part, we can go for, for a loaded brush. Oh, the black on the back of the brush was a bit too thin. Okay, so we let that dry, even though it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. We will continue with another uh, layer of, of a thinner wet and wet over there. Or a thinner loaded brush. So thinner black. Just not as much white on it. I want the highlight to be broader up here. And at this I, I can imagine that at this stage this is a great point to, to almost to have a play. Yeah. Because if, if at this stage, if it does go horribly wrong, quick coat of black and you can start again. Yeah. Um, Definitely. And I think it's also good to see that here the the stages in between are not really perfect. It's just, you see, it's just a rather rough blending and it will turn out quite nice if we just continue working with patience. What, what was that you were doing that you, you put the two lines? Was that for scratches? Yeah. Oh, okay. already starts to drying we'll just give it a second to rest mm -hmm. this may sound like something that, that's like really obvious but Ben actually has his wet palette set up but you can see the palette he also has like a little bit of tissue just to take off that excess paint in case this is your you know your first time yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's a quite a good point um, sometimes if it's just too much paint on the brush and just quickly wipe it off on the tissue Mm -hmm. uh, some painters are really crazy about um, the tissue and the consistency of paint. Um, for me, it's not uh, that important, but sometimes still you need to to uh, regulate that a little bit. Mm -hmm. and that, that's another good point to bring up. That is a way that some painters do check that they've got a correct consistency is by taking a drop of paint and then seeing how uh, and putting it on the tissue and seeing how quickly it goes in and bleeds yeah. out. Um, and it, if, if that works for you, you know, maybe it's something to, you know, something to try, see if it works. Yeah, Stefan Rath, for example, he does it like that, yep. Dervish. Uh, he shows that very nicely in the... Um, in the freehand DVD, which yeah. is a fantastic DVD. <laughs> Yeah, it was really surprising to me that freehand DVD. I think because the the title "Freehands and Banners," I was quite intimidated by it. 
um, because free hands is something that, that you know it's, it's I, I struggle with. Um, but there's a lot of good good tips. Like the first thirty minutes, he's giving so many good tips just for basic painting. Hmm. Not even talking about the free hands yet. Just how to how to work with paint. Yeah, we decided to to do a rather uh, uh, intense beginning where he explains about the consistency because it's so important for his technique that you get the consistency right. Mm -hmm. So we thought, okay, we give that like an extra chapter mm. of uh, paint consistency. And so something to remember as well is that every painter is different yeah. to, to the consistency they like to use. Um, I've, I've seen some painters who are using paint like like pretty much straight out of the pot and they're coming up with stuff that, that's award winning and, and contrarily for other people who are doing the um, the whole milk consistency thing and again they're coming up with some amazing stuff. Yeah, you just have to find a way that works for you and your place with your uh, humidity at home. It's a that, that's all, yeah. yeah it's, it's really a different thing if you paint in Scotland or in, uh, in Spain. It's mm. I mean, Michael was telling a story in one of the one of the videos that he was trying to paint in some country that was just so hot and he, he just couldn't do it because you know he was in his hotel room trying to paint and every time yeah. the brush came to the miniature it was dry there was there was nothing you could do. That could be why. Um, Fernando is is so hot on the the paint retarder. Yeah. In, uh, in Spain, he must he must need to, yeah, to keep that paint wet. Yeah, that's true. Forty degrees in Barcelona, you better use some retarder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you don't need a hair dryer for those conditions. No. tip of red in right yeah I'm now using just the clean brush to make sure I don't have any border I think that's one of the biggest things I've picked up just from these early this, these early chapters watching you is, is to do that yeah I, I think that's really one goal to to achieve a nicer blending also do not try to get everything done with one technique it's really hard, you know, you cannot wet blend a whole miniature. Mm -hmm. You could, but why? So it's always good to have a combination of different techniques that just uh, are right on spot for the, um, like the, the desired effect. Mm -hmm. So here it's a combination of um, wet and wet loaded brush, glazes and feathering. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people just think, okay, oh, he's doing everything with wet blending, but uh, it's just part of the truth. <laughs> I really like the the red. I think it works well with the with the bone color, and uh, it will look just awesome with with the gold. Mm -hmm. So you can't wait to have the gold in there as a contrast. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I will just continue with that plate here because it's also one of the uh, very interesting parts because we have like one uh, cylinder shape or a segment of a cylinder shape uh -huh. here. So we will have one light running down here in the middle. You can actually see that already quite nice here with the reflection mm -hmm. of the studio light. So we'll have one light here in the middle and darker to the sides. blending in the other direction. Size.
Yeah, just a nice, nice little loaded brush blending. It's, do you know, I was just thinking, it looks good as it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. I mean, it's a pity that I can't leave it like that. <laughs> I thought I could. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, I think if you would do that just with a bit of blue in there, that would already look quite non-metal. Mm. So some scratches and could call it done. But now some red. A, a, a good way, to, a good tip that um, John, John Harrison gave me was to say that uh, there's no such thing as too thin paint, but there is something as you, you can have too much paint on the brush. Yeah. Um, so even if you have like something that's really, really thin, you're not making much effect, you can keep going slowly at it to build it up rather than just thinking, oh, this is too thin, well, I'll just get loads of it. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. That's, that's true. Sadly, it doesn't. It would be cool. Hang on. Just loads. <laughs> So you thickened the paint very slightly there. Yeah, I just took a bit more on the on the red side. And uh -huh. It was a little too much, so I just licked the brush and came back with a clean brush. How how is the paint today? Is it, is it tasty? Is it, yeah, is yeah, it good? yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Merlot. <laughs> That's some. Um, some hint of melon with a subtle note of oyster shells. It's very <laughs> nice. Okay, just a very tiny bit of white in here. I have seen someone paint before, and and they they lick they lick the brush like relentlessly, um, and after a painting session, their lips were just blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was almost like a clown lips. <laughs> yeah, and like, you, 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 yum, yum, yum. I thought I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you on the yeah, enjoy, the enjoy just like enjoy that. your meal. Yeah, yeah. You really should not lick it that intensely. I just try to reduce it to to a minimum. Mm -hmm. um, it's also it's it's quite good in between just to get the tip back. It helps I do, that as well. That, that, yeah, I mean, typically I, I I don't lick a brush, but to keep to get the tip, I will do once once it's clean. Um, yeah. But even another another thing you can do as well, once you've um, put some paint on your brush, you can have like a piece a piece of like firm paper, and you can draw on the paper to, like pulling downwards and twisting, and that will give you yeah. give you a tip again if if you if you don't want to to lick. So you're you're putting some slightly more intense red next to the scratches there. Yeah. To especially because the, this area is a bit more. Um, Raised and exposed, I want the contrast to be a little higher and more saturated. Mm -hmm. These scratches are obviously from his um, his pet dog, where it's jumped up to, to welcome <laughs> the master home when he's got back from a, from a hard day slaying. <laughs> hard day slaying is good. Uh, I last night with um, with Michael, we, we I was having a quick look at the box, the 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 contents and stuff that come through. There's some really great figures in there. Some yeah, really yeah, nice yeah. It's actually for plastic. It's really mm. quite unbelievable, actually. How I really like the the, the winged guys um, mm -hmm. from the the Eternals. Like you've got, they've got like two massive hammers and these these wings. And like, yeah, <laughs> those are really cool. For for me, I, I think it's. It's just personal taste. I think it's a bit sad that they're um, that they're this bulky as well because they're like f supposed to fly. Okay. Yeah. And for me, they look a bit like bumblebees, especially okay. because because they're the yeah, golden yellow. You know, there's, there's no way that that metal armor's getting yeah. in the air on those. Ah, <laughs> uh, none of those wings. <laughs> so, 
I think it would have been a cool, uh, actually also a very interesting um, thing, figure-wise, to have very thin filigree models uh, flying. Mm -hmm. Especially in combination with the big dudes, with the hammers on floor. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's kind of a missed chance, but... Uh, but some of the parts are quite cool, like the the wings, for example. They're really nice little. They've bits. got that kind of steampunk feel. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're nice. So yeah, I think um, the rest of the red armor is really pretty much the same. We will uh, definitely show the front chest piece with the the gold frames and the the bone and. Mm -hmm. All the little extra elements but I think not to bore you guys we will just uh, paint the rest off cam and come back with the fully painted red armor and possibly we'll have a cup of tea in between yeah. or two, <laughs> or two. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right so um, you see I've completed the uh, red armor in in the back I didn't really uh, spend a lot of uh, attention to the detail it's just that it's covered and red because all the back part will be covered by the giant cloak that we have so um you see there's actually not a lot we will see of that um why i still want to make sure that it's properly painted at least the stuff that you see is you can always peek through the cape and see elements like that shining through so would you say it's also an area that that say you're you're trying a color scheme you haven't done before, you, if if something like that if it's going to be covered but yeah. you can just yeah, see yeah, it, maybe yeah. you could do it like the test piece there yeah, to yeah. make sure you're happy before you move forward. Yeah, that's I think that's quite a good idea because uh, just to if you, if you're not sure if the technique you're using will work out, mm -hmm. just try it there before you you touch areas like the front. So you will really want to be confident before you start. And some, yeah, I was about to say, sometimes on a miniature, if it's something I haven't done before, I won't instantly go straight to that main focal point yeah. on the front. I'll pick somewhere that's yeah, at the back get, and just get do a little warm. check. And, yeah. yeah, okay, that's good. I can, I can move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so in the next chapter, we will uh, show you how we uh, do all the gold non-metal framing work on that one. It will be slightly different to the Sigma one, because we will use uh, other colors. But um, I think before uh, we continue, I will just quickly do uh, some of the work here uh, off cam so you guys can see where we're heading. 